Welcome to a day in the life of an Oxford engineering student. Recently, a couple of you guys have asked for me to make one of these videos and here it is. Most days I tend to wake up about 5 a.m. just to get a head start on work. In the mornings I do tend to look like shit, my hair is catastrophic and I lost my beard trimmer a couple of weeks ago if you couldn't tell. But anyway, I remove all these negative thoughts and flood my brain with positive affirmations for the perfect start to the day. You're beautiful, Bartol. Anyway, I do have around 15 minutes of meditation in the morning, sometimes more depending on lectures. But yeah, sorry for the title of the video, guys, but today we're doing something a little different. Consider this market research, if you will. But this is just a little video to test whether anyone cares about aspects of my life other than going to Oxford. Because, let's face it, I should probably stop milking that. Maybe just one more video. Anyway, I keep saying I do things other than having studied at Oxford, like sailing yachts for clients around the Mediterranean and being a chef in the French Alps, but I've never really had the chance to show you that until now. So that was me going to the toilet. Anyway, having recently received a chest mount for my phone, which makes me look completely ridiculous, join me for a day off from being a private chef in the French Alps. So the whole skiing thing. This is my first time skiing. I used to snowboard quite a lot, and to be honest, skiing is a lot easier to learn. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying it. But I was completely terrible for the first few weeks until I started using this thing called carve, but more on them later. I want to say I woke up at the crack of dawn to catch the first lift up, but on my days off I can't really help but get a healthy 10 hours of sleep to catch up on all the hours sleep lost while cooking for rich people and their friends. No, I'm kidding. I love the job. It very much puts Oxford engineering to good use. Anyway, I live right next to the slopes in a beautiful chalet. Well, not in the chalet, I live in the attic of the chalet. But it means I get to go skiing every day. And who doesn't love putting long sticks on their feet and drifting on ice for four hours while wearing silly clothes and carrying metal poles? Now this little mountain I've slowly made my way up to is called La Masse, which after googling the translation to English just sounds not as exciting. But at least the views from the top are pretty cool. Well, halfway to the top. For some reason they closed the lift all the way to the top today. But as by the laws of physics, what goes up must come down. So I did, and it's a very pleasant blue down. Now if you're not familiar with the skiing slopes, green is the easiest, usually for kids. Blue is sort of a little bit harder, but still quite easy. Red is quite hard, and then black is pretty much vertical. But I like sticking to blues as it lets me focus on my technique as I did here. And lucky for you today, I even met a fellow Croatian. Well, he was Bosnian. But those guys are even more rare, so I had to stop and take a picture of him and send it to my family as evidence. Anyway, I couldn't stay and mingle with my new friend. I had to get training as my car was yelling in my ear telling me to get the hell going. So I did. I did some parallel turns, some carving, but to be honest, I was expecting this little montage to be a little bit more exciting than it turned out. So if you're still watching, congratulations. As you can see, skiing is kind of just going down and then going up, then going down a little bit and then going up again. So after doing that for a couple of the runs, I decided to take another chairlift. This one was not enclosed, so I was exposed to the elements for uh, a good six or seven minutes or so. But I saw some skiers, saw some snowboarders, saw some people crashing. And behind there should be the Mont Blanc, the tallest mountain in France, maybe even Europe. But yeah, it was getting quite chilly, so I decided to put my gloves on as I usually like to take them off because it gets quite warm on the lift, especially after I'm doing a really hard blue or something. But yeah, I put my little gloves on and decided to do a little time lapse. Unfortunately, halfway through, the chairlift slowed down, so it kind of ruined it. But anyway, we got to the top of Sunny Express, which on this day wasn't that sunny. Here I am lifting the little guardrail, little daredevil. But yeah, getting off quite smoothly, if I may say so myself. Now it was time to go down Sunny, which is also a lovely blue. If you're ever uh, near Valter Range, definitely try it. Hopefully when it's more sunny. But yeah, it just has a really nice I'm not going. Anyway, decided to do a little bit of off piece there, maybe a little foreshadowing for later. It is a really beautiful run, and especially if you're thinking of coming, come in January, because this is right after the school holidays where, you know, there's not as much kids to sort of crash into. Here I stop for a second, I like to take a little breather just to take the views. And sorry about the chest mount, it seems to always be angling down towards my skis. It has quite a long lever on, so the weight of the phone just kind of pulls it down. Anyway, here I am stopping to, I guess, enjoy the views of Vapre. There are quite a few sort of Vapre bars here near Val Turin. There are a few famous ones like Folly Deuce or Rock 7, I think. But I haven't had a chance to go to any of them yet. Maybe one day. 
But yeah, it was slowly getting dark, so I decided to make my way down. But then I got caught in a little little off-piece section, which I mean I did on purpose because I'm really trying to build up my off-piecing technique. Everyone tells me that it's completely different to on-piece technique. And that is probably true because on piece I'm quite okay, but here, oh, here I do seem to sort of lose my balance. And geez, when you enter a snow of about a meter deep, even if it's less than a meter, you sink and your skis are lost. They are literally just big long sticks and they just sort of get stuck in the snow. I get up as I always do and try again. And you know, maybe this time I'll succeed. Really not, definitely not a success. But you just sort of brush off. And the wonderful thing is wherever you fall, it will be an amazing view. So you can always just sit back for a couple of seconds and just enjoy the mountains around you, which I guess is the most important part of skiing anyway. Just enjoying the beautiful scenery around you rather than focusing on how many miles you've done, things like this. But I did some quite quick skiing on the to try and get back as quick as possible just because it was getting quite dark this is a beautiful te interesting angle but beautiful technique so as i mentioned before these carved gadgets are actually very very helpful they have this lady in your ear well it'll have to be a lady but it feels nicer coming from a lady that sort of screams at you as you're doing your turns and she sort of tells you what your ski iq is which you know i guess it somehow relates to your regular IQ. Now, I don't know if it's logarithmic, but they make some sort of scale. And currently, I'm actually not too bad. I'm, I'm somewhere in the 130s, and I really hope it's not logarithmic, because that puts me in sort of nearly at the 150 range, which is actually outside their limit. Sorry for the detour. I came back home, I looked at the lovely view from, from our little attic and had a little shower. Then I made myself a little coffee. Now we've run out of normal milk, so I had to use almond milk, so don't think I'm all vegan and stuff. I had a little bit of leftover tiramisu and that's a wonderful thing of being a chef is that I can just make some food for myself as well. And tiramisu is my favorite. It's the only dessert I will ever eat and I loved it. But anyway, I got back home, had a shower, had my coffee and dessert, and decided to do some stuff on my laptop. Now, I don't know what I was doing, because outside of making these little videos, there's nothing else I really do, apart from some tutoring on the side. But I guess I was maybe writing a little script for a video, or editing one of these videos. That usually takes quite a while, so I was there for probably about four or five hours, but I decided to go to bed because, you know, tomorrow's another day of work, another day in the kitchen. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.